Hey, everybody. Come on in. Let's get a dose of Fly Lady Love. Mwah. We got lots to talk about. Lots to talk about. We've been discussing sync reflections. And it's reminded me, I just got off the phone with a young woman who is uh, wanting to write a book. And I got to tell her the story about how I wrote sync reflections. And, and try, you know, working toward inspiring her to keep writing because there are, there are things out there that want to stop you from doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, it's, it's true. So when I wrote Sync Reflections, my sister, Patty, she's on here somewhere. You know, she says I'm the bossy one, but she's really the most bossy one. Uh, she said, sister, you need to write a book. And I said, N I give it away. I send essays out every day. I don't need to write a book. And she said, oh yeah, you do. People want to hold a book. So... In two weeks, in July of 2001, I think it was, I put together this book. Now, it didn't get published for another few months, like six months, eight months, but it started right there. I took, took the... Um, the essays that I had been writing and put them into an outline and put the book together. And in two weeks, my goal every day was to get my routines done. Your routines first. That is an essay that's going out um, on the 12th, I believe it is. Routines first. You get your routines done before you declutter. You get your routines done before you go run errands. You get your routines done before you uh, start working on a project you're working on. Getting your routines done first helps you to be able to accomplish things. So my goal was to get dressed to lace up shoes and start working at 8 o'clock in the morning. And at 8 o'clock in the morning, I would work for three hours or 10 pages, three hours or 10 pages. And before I knew it, I had a manuscript. When you got a manuscript, that's when you can have people start looking at it. And now we have the fourth book, The Chaos Cure is coming out in December and you can pre-order it. So we go from hot pink to another color pink and we are, the rest is history. Leanne and I wrote Body Clutter. That was the second book. And then the 31 Baby Steps was the third book. And it's all because I got my routines done first. Get your routines done. Because that frees you up. If you need to do some massive decluttering in your house, Get up, get dressed to lace up shoes. Fix your hair and your face. Isn't my hair fluffy? I washed it a while ago. Fix your hair and face. And, <clears throat> and then figure out what's for dinner. Empty the dishwasher. Get something going in the crock pot. And bam. You don't have to think about dinner because it's going. Your, your, Leanne wrote an essay one time about your indentured servants. That's those appliances you have stashed someplace you know your bread machine your crock pot your one pot all of those things uh, all of those things are are when you get them done when you get dinner in the crock pot you are good yes Kim go get your lace up shoes on this is good 
So my one little piece of advice to the sweet young lady I was talking to is keep writing. Keep writing. Because not many people can write. And those people who pick your tweets and your Facebook post and and the things you're writing, they pick them to death because of, you know, a bad grammar thing or a misspelling. They're good editors. They've told you who they are because they're picking at you. So just let them do what they do best. When you get a manuscript done, bam. Then you can let those perfectionists have at it. That's their talent. It's not yours. Your talent is writing. My talent is being bossy. But I do like to write. So writing is good. When you allow perfectionism for fear that you might make a mistake, there are a lot of books sitting on shelves everywhere that never got published because some perfectionist beat themselves up because they weren't good enough. Well, guess what? That's what editors are for. I mean, I was talking to this sweet young lady and she, and she says, am I going to need to get a CPA? Those are expensive. And I said, you're putting the cart before the horse. You have to ride it first. And you can't let the devil put the perfectionist in your head to stop you from writing because that's what they want. She's working on an inspirational book. It's her story. It's the lessons she's learned. <clears throat> so folks, find out what your passion is. I didn't know I could write a book. I had no clue. But you know, I can break it down into baby steps and I can write 10 pages or uh, now I, I worked on about a thousand words a day when I did the Chaos Cure book. And it happened. I had a fun game out of it. My editor would send me 10 topics to write on. I would put them in a bowl and I'd pull one out and I'd write on it. I've outlined a book, listened to music. And letting God kind of outline the book. It's all fun. So get your routines done. Routines first. But you don't have to take English and writing to be able to write like you speak. And those are the most fun books to, to read. Because you feel like, that's what people have said to me about sync reflections and my essays. They touch people because I'm just talking to you. Just like I'm talking to you right now. I mean, I was listening to Scott Adams this morning and he said, do you feel watching this, watching me on a podcast and interacting with people on Periscope, do you feel like the world has gotten smaller? And it has. I mean, it's, I learned a lot from him. Uh, on, on persuasion and how to get people involved in things. There's my sister Dana. So folks, let go of your perfectionism because it's really from the devil. That's all it is. It's from the devil. Now, I had to fight perfectionism today really hard a while ago. Uh, I, um, I put this shirt on. This is the shirt I wore yesterday. And I've been trying not to wear the same thing two days in a row. But this was hanging up in my bathroom because I hung it up when I got, when I took it off yesterday. Because I have a sleeveless tank on underneath it. And yesterday's tank was dark brown. Today's it's tan. I had to fight my perfectionism. I had to fight my perfectionism. To put this shirt back on. So I did it. Because I was going to. I was determined to d get on here. And talk to you. And it didn't matter that I wore this shirt yesterday. It's just a cover shirt. That's all it is. I look good in blue. 
I like the way I feel in blue. Yay! Yes, perfectionism has a very loud voice, but when you hear where that's coming from, if you hear that voice in the devil's voice, it'll stop you from being a perfectionist. You hear it for what it really is. It's somebody. Now, let me talk to you about body clutter. Let me get my body clutter book. This book, this was a tough book to write. It took two years to write. It was a journey. That's why we called it the body clutter journey. But we published it. We self-published it. And we had 15,000 people tell me. I have still have all their emails where they said they wanted to buy the book. Because I didn't know how many to publish. Because when we did Sync Reflections, the first time we printed it, we only did 10,000. So we pre-ordered. 16,000 of these books, the original, uh, the original book. And the devil was working overtime. I'm telling you, this book got published. It got sent to the, the, they have to bind a bindery. They have to put it and glue this spine and do lots of things. And it was a black and white book. And that book went off to the bindery. It was coming back. In two weeks, we were going to debut the book in Baltimore. And we needed to have some copies with me because we hadn't pre-sold them, but we had 15,000 people saying they wanted it. So we ordered the 16,000 books. And the truck coming from Atlanta crashed on Interstate. Uh, what is that interstate? 85. Yep. It crashed. At the Georgia South Carolina line. It crashed. And we had 16, almost 16,000. 16, it was 15,700 books destroyed. Destroyed. They were accordion, accordioned. They were flattened out. They looked like fans. It was awful. It was awful. But guess what? We were determined. We called the printer up, print another 16,000. We're going to go through these books one box at a time and see if we can find enough to get to Baltimore. We found 300 books and you know, we sold them. We were not going to let the devil keep us down. Nope. He tried hard, but it didn't work because you can tell that perfectionist devil that picks at us every day, picks at us, that says you're not good enough, but you are good enough. And you turn that I'm, you're not good enough around. Say, I can do this. Fly lady's teaching me how. I can do it. We do not have to be held captive any longer. And we have a praise moment here. Because all the babies are saved from the cave. Their coach is saved from the cave. The rescue workers that were in the cave helping them have been saved. God took care of it all. I knew when I got up this morning that it was all going to be okay. I knew it. Faith of a mustard seed. It's all it takes. Do you know how big a mustard seed is? I, I have a mustard seed charm somewhere. I'll bring it tomorrow. I think it's it's, it's on my computer table because it reminds me. A mustard seed is the size of the point of this Sharpie. Put it from my face. The point of this Sharpie, that is the size of a mustard seed. That's all the faith it takes. And I was listening to a preacher on Sunday and... He said, you know, even if you're reluctant to do something, if you just go through the steps, 
sort of fake it till you make it. That's stepping out in faith. So go put your lace-up shoes on. You can argue with me all you want, but if you go put your lace-up shoes on, that's telling yourself that you kind of believe what I'm saying. I, I promise you it works. It really does work. Faith of a mustard seed. That's all it takes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. You can hope, but you got to get up and do something. And, and the, the Bible teaches us in James chapter 2, verse 14, it talks about faith without works. You got to put something. You can't just sit in your chair and expect your house to be clean. That ain't going to happen. You got to get up off your bottom and do something. Now we come up with fun ways to do it. We've been playing with these little cards. Look here these little cards this makes it a game you got to play games with ourselves you got to take what is an asset to you and you know what that asset is we are fun loving people we are fun loving people all we want to do is play and housework is not play but if we turn it into a game it becomes fun Put your, put your babies in some, on a rainy day, put your babies in their bathing suits and let them get in there and, and slip and slide on your kitchen floor. You'll have the cleanest floor ever because you made it fun. You made it fun. So don't let the devil get in your way of having what you really want. And that is a home that blesses you that blesses your family. When you hear that perfectionism coming out of your mouth, when you hear yourself say, if you can't do it right, don't do it at all, stop it. You can put an end to this by saying, if I just do two minutes, that's all I gotta do is two minutes. I lost my timer, where's my timer? Where'd I put my timer? Do y'all think I need to clean off my hot spot? Here's my timer. <clears throat> Two minutes. Really, it's all about redirecting yourself. When you get the I don't want to's, set your timer for two minutes. Go five, four, three, two, one, blast off like Mel says, and get your butt up. Get your butt up and do something. Because we have to put an action with it. You know, finally loving yourself is all about actions. It's all about actions. So how do you love yourself? Well, you get up and you get dressed to shoe. You know why that's loving yourself? Because you don't embarrass yourself when you go to the door and you're in your pajamas at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Putting shoes on your feet helps you to be able to... Catch your baby running out the door. There's a commercial for some, some ring doorbell or something. And this guy's at the gym and he's watching his little girl get out the door. Mommy's on the computer somewhere and she's watching. Or she could be in the bathroom. Who knows? But she's watching and they're both hollering, get back in the house. You could run after that baby if you have your shoes on. If you don't have your shoes on, you're going to run after that baby, but your, your rocks and stuff might hurt your feet. We've gotten testimonials about this where they live on busy roads with log trucks going by and the two-year-old got out of the car on his own, running down the driveway to see the big trucks. And mommy was able to hit the door and caught up with the baby before it got to the road. Routines first. And then that sets your day up for success. Get up in the morning, get dressed to lace up shoes, fix your hair and face. You automatically are going to look wonderful. It's You're going to look wonderful when you go in the bathroom and you don't scare yourself. 
looking with your hair sticking up all over. You can do this. If I did it, anybody can. And when your house gets in order, then you're, you're more available to hear what the good Lord has for you. When you slow down, you can hear. Might be little nudges pushing you in a direction, but you can feel it and you know what you're supposed to be doing. Did I ever think I could mentor me and people? Nah. God had other plans. And those plans were real simple. Put one foot in front of the other. Take the baby steps. Take the baby steps. Because everybody's got a talent. Mine might not have been, I might not have been born with the ability to keep a house organized, but you know, I'm pretty smart. I'm pretty smart and I could teach myself how to do it. When I figured out that I had never established a habit, bam, it was like a light bulb went off. So I had to, instead of trying to practice every habit at once, I practiced one habit at a time. I see it one at a time and I would build on that and once I the first habit was shining my sink just that's what sink reflection is all about it's keeping that sink clean and shining but from that my kitchen became beautiful this week we're in zone two that's our kitchens <laughs> So folks, there aren't any excuses. We're going to nip those excuses in the bud. We're going to get on our lace-up shoes. We're going to be dressed and ready to greet your day, even though it's almost 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You can figure out what it is. You can figure out. If you can't, just jump in with where we are right now. Just do what you can. Swishing and swiping is the habit we're practicing this month. This one habit keeps your bathroom always looking good. You're not ashamed for anybody going in your bathroom because you've swished and swiped. Now, we had a question this morning. She she was... Um, upset that her toilet bowl brush when she took it out of the cleaner was dripping on her floor well her toilet bowl holder brush holder is not close enough to the toilet now here's what you do where's my toilet bowl brush let me get here see this handy dandy toilet bowl brush you pull it out of the vase that is holding it and you patiently let the stuff drip off because it's still, when you use a 50-50 solution, it's not too thick, it's not too thin. 50-50 solution. Hold it up, let it drip for a few seconds. And then you're close enough to the toilet, raise the seat up, and then swish the toilet. Nothing hits the floor. It's not rocket science, folks. Now, you can do like Fly Lady Liz. You can put your 50-50 solution in a squirt bottle like dishwashing liquid would go in and squirt some in the toilet. But then you still have a wet toilet bowl brush and you can put that back down in your vase. But I like having my cleaner in the vase. That's the way I've always done it and it works. And this thing gets underneath the rim. Toilets even work better when you get that scale out from underneath the rim, especially if you have hard water. Now, <clears throat> bleach and water. No, 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 no bleach and water. It's soap and water. Soap and water. Now, we're about to run out of these. We have decided that Friday is the last day to order your Swish and Swipe package. You heard it here first. 
Friday is the last day. Last day to get your purple rags and your rubber swisher for half price. Last day. You can do it. You really can do it. This is a great tool. So don't let your perfectionism get in the way of what you're supposed to be doing for the rest of your life. Don't do it. Okay, folks. I got to get back to work. Seems like I've been either on the phone all day long, so I haven't really accomplished a whole lot today. So I'm going to work from two to four to try to get a bunch of things done. Y'all have a good day. I love you all. Be, be kind to yourself. That's, that's an action that you can take every day. It's a, any toilet bowl brush will work. You just have to use a little elbow grease right here. If you don't want to order one from us, that's fine. But go to the dollar store and get a toilet bowl brush. I love you all. Let go of your perfectionism and your life is going to change. It's going to change. This is, as Scott Adams says, this is a summer of love. You know, I only do this for the babies. You're a baby. You're my baby. You're my fly baby. I do this for you, but I also do it for all the babies that are living in your house. There's no coupon code for the half price. It's half price. You don't, you don't need a coupon code. <clears throat> it's for the babies. Because everybody deserves to live in a home where they feel valued, loved. We get, when we slow down, this mouth is not a tool of meanness anymore. This becomes a way to inspire people and love people. Let go of your perfectionism. We all make mistakes, and I'm talking to me. And the mistakes we made got us in, in certain paths. Any old soap will work. Leftover shampoo, leftover body wash. You can grate a bar of soap and put it in some hot water and dissolve it. Hey, any soap will do. Soap is soap. I don't like caustic chemicals. So if it's not good enough for my dog or my grandchildren, or my, and I have very sensitive skin, so most everything... I get makes me break out so I have I usually have to use it in my toilet bowl holder I love you all I'll see you back here tomorrow let me get my little magic wand my husband made for me it's so sweet I'm going to touch the button